in this video tutorial let us understand about the seed so as we know that the seeds are actually formed from the ovules after the fertilization so whatever the ovules which are present in the ovary after the fertilization so after we call it as post fertilization these ovules are only converting into the seeds and all the ovary is becoming the fruit now if you see the seeds are actually containing the parts and the seeds are divided into majorly of the two types based on the number of cotyledons so we have two types of seeds one is a dicot seed other one is a monocot seed suppose if the seed contains the two cotyledons then that seed is said to be a dicot seed if the seed contains a single cotyledon or like one cotyledon is present that seed is called as a monocot seed now let us see what are the parts which are present in this so usually the all the seeds are covered with a a layer a coat type of structure we call it as a seed coat so the seeds contain the seed coat and it is also contains an embryo so coming to this embryo embryo is actually containing the three more parts so it contains radical from which the uh, root uh, system is formed it will be containing the embryonal axis so this embryonal axis radical and plumule are attached so radical plumule on the embryonal axis along with that one or two cotyledons are present so if one cotyledon is present that is monocot if two cotyledons are present that is a dicot now the plant which contains this dicot or the two cotyledonous seeds we consider them as a dicotyledonous plants if single cotyledon is present that is a monocotyledonous plants so let us see what are the examples comes under this the dicot if you take any seed if you can able to break into the two equal halves and it will be containing a partition those seeds are said to be dicot seeds example gram and the pea and if you cannot break into the two equal halves there is no partition over there those are called as a monocot seeds example wheat maize rice etc now let us discuss about the dicot so this dicot will be having the seed coat embryonal axis radical plumule all these are present so usually the seed coat the outer layer of the seed which is helpful for the protection of the cotyledons it is the outermost covering of a seed in the dicot this covering is actually containing the two layers this seed coat will be containing the two layers one is the inner layer other one is a outer layer so the outer layer we call it as the testa the outer seed coat layer we call it as testa and the inner seed coat layer is call it as a tegmen now if you see uh, here i am just drawing a, a black gram or the chana so it will be uh, looking like this if you are seeing now if you just carefully observe you can find the small structure here as well let us label let us try to label, label these parts whatever the outer layer covering this that is called as a seed coat this seed coat is actually made up of a two outer and the inner layer outer layer is the testa whereas the inner layer is the tegma now you can see a small partition type of uh, suture is present over here so if you just remove this seed coat you can actually make the seed into the two equal halves and after removing the seed coat whatever you are seeing inside of that that is the seed or the embryo so on this embryo we will be having the structure so there is a at the upper portion there will be a scar or the mark on the seed coat that is called as a hilum hilum is the scar which is present on the seed coat we call it as hilum and below the hilum there will be a opening into this ovule that opening part we call it as a micropyle the micropyle is a small pore type of structure through which the 
pollen tube actually enters for the fertilization process so this is the small pore present above the hilum and is helpful for the entry of the pollen tube to reach with to reach the egg for the fertilization and what is this hilum hilum is just like a scar and through this hilum only these developing seeds will be attached to the fruits usually you can see inside of the fruit the seeds are attached so through the hilum the seeds were attached to the fruit part so that is a hilum and the opening we call it as a micropyle so if you just see the uh, structure as we told that it will containing the seed coat and the embryo if you see the embryo will be having the major part that is a embryonal axis so suppose this is the embryonal axis and this embryonal axis will be containing the plumule radical and the cotyledons so these lobe type of structures which are present on both the sides how many cotyledons are there two cotyledons so what are these cotyledons these cotyledons are actually the fleshy because they will be storing the food material that's why they are bulging looking like a fleshy and they are actually contain the full of food so full of the reserve food material is present in the cotyledon and this axis type of structure we call it as embryonal axis so this embryonal axis contains the radical and plumule on the both the sides so the upper tip upper edge and the lower part so this upper part we call it as a plumule which will be forming the shoot system and this lower part the lower end we call it as a radical and that is helpful to develop the root system so radical start with r r so root from radical shoot from plumule so both are present on both the ends of this embryonal axis and it is containing the fleshy bulged reserved food material structures called as the cotyledons this whole structure is the embryo now in this dicots uh, actually we need to understand what is the endosperm so usually endosperm is a type of tissue if you just see the uh, fertilization process in the plants we can see the double fertilization in some of the angiosperms usually the egg which is present which is in haploid condition egg will be fusing with the sperm cell that sperm cell is also in haploid condition once the fertilization occurs it leads to the formation of a diploid cell we call it as a zygote or the fertilized egg so that is happening with the first sperm cell we have the second sperm cell also this second sperm cell will go and fuse with the polar nuclei which is present at the center so this polar nuclei is in diploid condition second sperm cell is in haploid condition and after the fertilization after fusion of the second sperm cell with the diploid polar nuclei it will form the 3n condition cell we call it as endosperm or primary endosperm nucleus is formed endosperm which is in 3n condition so here the fertilization the fusion of the sperm cell with the egg ones the sperm cell with the polar nuclei here the fertilization is occurring two times that's why we call it this process as the double fertilization so whenever the double fertilization happens then only the endosperm formation takes place or else the zygote formation takes place so based on this the seeds are actually again divided into two more types one is the endospermic seeds other one is the non endospermic seeds so let us see what is endospermic the seeds which contain the endosperm and how the endosperm is formed the endosperm is formed due to the double fertilization so once the double fertilization occurs then only the endosperm can be formed so this endosperm is actually the storing tissue it will store all the food and it will be providing to the growing embryo so the food storing tissue is the endosperm example you can see in the castor seeds and the seeds which are not uh, containing this endosperm those are called as the non endospermic seeds 
so these are not endospermous so endosperm is not formed because there is no double fertilization so you cannot find any endosperm in these type of seeds in the mature seeds these are called as non endosperms they cannot store any uh, food material example or the beans or the garden pea or like a gram so this is about the dicot type of seed let us see the monocot so if you see the monocot it will be containing the single cotyledon generally all the monocots are of the endospermic in nature so the endosperm is formed will be storing the food so the endospermic seeds are present in all the monocots except orchids so orchids also comes under the monocot but this orchids will not contain the endosperm now the seeds of this maize so let us uh, try to understand uh, here i am just drawing a structure that is the seed of a maize so this maize the seed coat whatever the seed coat will be there that is not uh, separated as a layer that seed coat is just like a membrane type of structure that is completely fused with the fruit wall so if you are seeing that outer external uh, layer is the seed coat so this seed coat is just like a membrane type of structure this is membranous and it is completely fused whatever the seed coat is there that is fused with the fruit wall so you cannot uh, separate it very easily it is actually fused completely so inside of it it is containing the endosperm so the endosperm is a nutritive nutritive tissue as we already discussed this monocot will be containing the endospermic type of seeds so whatever the layer which is covering here this is the outer layer which covers the endosperm so this is outer layer covering the endosperm so where is the endosperm is present so endosperm is present below this layer and here along with this endosperm endosperm is just like a nutritive tissue which will be providing the food for this growing embryo so this is the embryo which is very small in size and that is protected and that is separated by this layer and whatever the empty space which is present here that is actually the endosperm or the stored food material which is supplying the food to this growing embryo which is formed because of the double fertilization so which is so bulk it is bulky and it stores the food that food will be utilized for the growing embryo now whatever this endosperm is there this endosperm actually separates the embryo by a one more proteinaceous layer so let us see this structure a bit briefly here of the monocot seed so here you can observe any wheat or the rice grain for better understanding now whatever the outermost layer is there this outermost layer we call it as a seed coat in the monocots this seed coat is completely fused with the fruit wall the wall of the fruit these two structures are completely fused so below this you can find a, a proteinaceous layer which separates the embryo so that proteinaceous layer we call it as a eluron layer so here i am just drawing a one more layer so inside of it what will be present this whole part is the endosperm as we told the monocots are endospermic it is a bulky and it is storing the food material all this material is actually separated from the embryo by a layer called as a eluron layer so whatever the layer here i'll just uh, draw like this so this whole layer which is covering the endosperm what is the function of this layer so this layer protects the or it separates the embryo from this endosperm so this is the 
एल्यूरोन लेयर एल्यूरोन मीन्स प्रोटीन सो दिस इज अ एल्यूरोन लेयर मेड अप ऑफ अ प्रोटीन दैट्स वाई वी ऑल्सो कॉल इट एज अ प्रोटीनस लेयर एंड वॉट इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ दिस एल्यूरोन लेयर इट सेपरेट्स द एम्ब्रियो ओके एंड डाउन ऑफ इट we will be having a one sheath type of structure we call it as the scutellum so here yeah so let us try to draw there is a large shield type of shield shaped cotyledon is present so this is called as the scutellum so this scutellum is present below this and this is a a large sized shield type of structure or the shield shaped type of cotyledon is present that cotyledon we call it as the scutellum so the scutellum is the place where it is actually containing the embryonal axis and the embryo is present so this whole part in the scutellum only we have the embryo so wherever the embryo is present embryonal axis so on that embryonal axis the upper region is the plumule and the lower region is the radicle so let us see there will be actually a covering for this uh, let us go with the terms clearly so this cutellum is just like a shield shaped cotyledon this whole is the embryo part so this embryo part will be having these type of structures let us see what are this this is the upper structure we call it as the plumule and this is the lower structure we call it as the radicle and what is the difference between these two plumule is present the one end of the embryonal axis to form the shoot system and the radicle is present the other end of the embryonal axis which forms the root system along with that there will be a layer if you see this is a plumule and the plumule is actually covered with the layer so the layer which covers the plumule we call it as the coleoptile or coleoptile coleoptile is a one a layer surrounds the plumule and in the same way a layer surrounds the radicle we call it as the coleorhiza the layer encloses the radicle we call it as a coleorhiza so where you can find this embryo it is a small structure which is situated at the one end of this endosperm it is present in a group at the one end of the endosperm that actually contains a scutellum and the axis containing the radicle and plumule the layer which surrounds the plumule is called as coleoptile the layer surrounds the radicle we call it as the coleorhiza so these are the differences between the monocot as well as the dicot seed and the structure